Yahusha HaMashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And every single week, Mom and I are always delighted. We're always happy and <laughs> joyful and thankful that you all get to you join us and hang out with us because, you know, we were going to keep the Sabbath day anyway. So yeah. it's nice to have company. <laughs> That's nice. You guys are awful nice to come in and hang out with us. And we just love you all so much. You are such a delight to us. And we are very deeply and profoundly grateful, especially for those who take the time to pray. And I don't just mean, you know, that quickie prayer. I'm talking about people that labor in prayer, who get a word from the Most High that it's time to pray and they go to fighting in the spirit. You know what I'm talking about. They grab the sword and they start cutting devils up and breaking through things and destroying things and praying prayers of the Psalms and praying the, mm -hmm. the things that were written and just speaking it into the atmosphere. These intercessors change the world. Yeah. Uh, and so I am so grateful for them to be in this house. Your family might think you've lost it sometimes the way you walk around the house or the way you get the interceding. Uh, they might think you've lost it, but just so you know, your family, your forever family, we really appreciate your intercession, your prayers, because but for his grace, we would all be in ditches. And it is his grace that causes us to finish well before him. Amen. And so I am so grateful for every one of you. I am thankful for those of you that are coming into your calling and purpose, your your place in the body of Messiah. And one of the dangers that we have in this hour is we have tremendous amounts of doubling down on foolishness. We have a lot of that which is called faith, which is presumption. And we're going to get into some things today because I believe he wants us to know how to walk in the faith that works by love. The faith that works by love. I have firsthand experience with this on a regular basis. Mama will tell you, uh, most people when they get hurt or sick or something's wrong, they're running to the doctor, they're running to a pharmacist, they're running to a medicine cabinet. I run to my Elohim. That's right. I run yeah. straight to my Elohim. And he always hears me when I cry, every time. And so I'm always grateful that you're here, but I want to tell you, saints, we have got to remember that this time together is so that we will develop and walk in faith, which works by love, because that's the only thing that you will that you need. If we're going to prep you right for the last days and I got to think about what's going to be on your list for the last days. What do I want to make sure you got in your backpack before you and I can't talk to each other anymore? If this is going to go away. And there's one thing I want you to walk around with, and that is faith that worketh by love. I want to make sure that bottle of oil is in your backpack. Amen. Amen. Especially as we go through the days that are in front of us. Amen. And so we've never been to where we're going before. And this is why we need to know how to walk by faith. So we're going to take a look at a few things today. We're going to find out that a lot of things that you think are lumped under the subject of faith. Faith has been used as a generic word to mean religion, um, any belief system, 
I mean, that's not what the Bible says. And the Bible clearly defines faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, the word says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So a definition has appeared right in the scripture to define what the scripture means when it says the word faith. I mean, when he is saying, when he says faith, faith is the substance. Now faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. And so we need to know how faith works. We need to operate by faith. It's a word used often uh, by people who have very little of it. And yet those who walk by faith hardly talk about faith. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, and the more you know about faith, the less you'll even say that word. So when you saw all these people talking about it, it was a dead giveaway that they didn't really have it as much as they were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, uh, again, he wants you to have it in an authentic manner. And that only comes into authentic vessels. Uh, so if we have lie in us, if we lie to ourselves, right? So people lie to themselves all the time. If you're doing that, you can't receive the truth because the truth has no place to land, saints. We have got to be vessels that are, that are full of integrity, that are set apart. And that means clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. And so that's what he's calling for right now. And only he can do that. We can't do it. We can't just say one day, you know, I want to have clean hands and a pure heart. I can't just wake up one day and say, you know, I really would like to have clean hands, right? Mama, I just want to be perfectly clean. We can't. Not apart from him. So he's got to clean our hands. He's got to purify our heart. He's got to restore integrity. He's got to bring us to a place where we can not only be honest with him, but with ourselves. Amen. And this is where faith begins. Faith begins with this truth that sets men free. And so today we're going to get into this. I believe it's going to bless you, but I also believe that it's going to challenge you. Uh, because again, if you have already have your ideas of what faith is and how faith works, and it ain't moving any mountains in your life, then we may need to double check the double check of the double check. Amen. So let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, because there's only two places in the whole of the whole Old Testament where the word faith is even used. You'll see the word faithful, but the word faith is only twice in the whole New Testament, in the Old Testament, rather. And in this particular passage, which I believe is incredibly telling, Yahuwah Elohim is speaking to the only people on earth who could possibly have faith. Because as we know from the word, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by his word, right? So the only way they could have had faith is if he speaks. Well, this is the only group on earth who he had spoken to. So they were the only ones on earth who could potentially have any faith? Take a look at what his provocation, what his uh, proclamation was over the children of Israel, the only ones on earth through the prophet Moses who had heard directly from Yahuwah Elohim. Look at this, Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two and verse sixteen. It says, "They who is he speaking of? They, the very ones, the same ones who were chosen out of all the peoples of the earth to hear his voice." So I want you to watch this human nature because this is presumption and uh, taking things for granted on steroids. Look at this. They provoked him to jealousy with what? Strange Elohims, strange gods, which with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to Elohim, to Elohims whom they knew not. The new gods or new Elohims that came up newly, right? Whom their fathers feared not. Somebody's just making these up. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten Elohim that formed thee. And when Yahuwah saw it, he abhorred them. Watch this now. What's he say? He abhorred them. How would you like if somebody says, I abhor you? I just abhor you. That doesn't sound good. Does that sound good? Okay, look at this. He abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom there is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not Elohim. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Look at this. Why is he saying this? To the people who received his 
word, right? So these are the only ones who could possibly be operating by faith. Everybody else didn't even know what he said. This is the light to the nations. But I suggest to you that he is prophesying and that these people couldn't possibly be able to uh, uh, acclimate and assimilate the word the way the, the new covenant brings it in. Because again, remember, according to the book of Hebrews, which repeats the prophecy of Jeremiah, he would write his laws, his Torah, upon our heart and mind, and then we would teach it to our children. You see, it has to be done this way, because once, when it's out here, you require physical force, guilt, manipulation, control, all manner of things to get you, the human being, to do those things. But how many know that it's a whole different thing when it comes up from inside somebody? I just want you to think about that. Two children. One, you have to make clean their room. I mean, you got to stand on their head. You got to be in the doorway. You got to tell them everything to do. You got to threaten them with not having any fun, not having any toys, not being able to go play with their friends, whatever their special benefit is. You got to use external force, essentially, something to get them to behave. Whereas this other child, just heard that you wanted that, loves you so much, saw that it makes you happy when they clean their room, like they saw your face. And we're like, oh, that makes you happy? Well, I'm going to do that all the time now. Right. I'm just going to do that all the time. I'm just going to do that because I like it. I like making mama happy. I like papa smiling at me. So they just clean their room just because. They didn't even get told to clean it. Didn't even get told. Just walked in there one day and says, you know, it's a little messy in here. Let me, let me tidy up. Two different children. Come on, somebody, help me yeah, preach this thing. That's right. All right. This group over here needs to be beat up, needs to be told, needs to be rebuked. Like, man, it is nothing but work. And everybody's had one of them children know exactly what I'm talking about. Then you have this other child over here, and you're just like, well, you're just the delight to my heart. That's right. Where, can we just clone you? Right. I heard they clone people. Can we clone you? Because, yeah. man, you know, <laughs> you are amazing, right? That's right? Why is that? Because that person has learned how to be in that moment and that is coming up from the inside of them not from the outside so nobody's forcing them that's the beauty of it okay so all the people that are a little dull with it like why are they mad at me because you need to be told everything that's why because some things you should just know to do i mean i mean some things are common sense well they're not so common because obviously common sense is not common but you get my point and so what is he saying here he's saying they have moved me to jealousy that's very emotional have you ever been jealous? I want you to stop for a moment and just think about being jealous. Like, they're giving love that was meant for you to someone else. Just think about jealousy. Now I want you to think of it, El Elyon is jealous. How can that work out good? I don't know. Uh, and they, how did they do it? By putting up fake, false, made up Elohim fake God or God stuff, right? Things that he never said or never did, right. and they just invented it. This provokes him to jealousy, mm -hmm. and it makes him angry. It says, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation, right? And so just as Israel rejected uh, much of Israel, not all, but some of Israel rejected the word of Yahuwah and had been rejecting the word of Yahuwah for some time, by the way, because 200 years before Messiah even showed up, there was a major confrontation over just the calendar. And the Zadok ended up having to leave in order to preserve the holy calendar of Yahuwah that had come in. And it was at that time that, you know, the moon guys came in and started moving everybody to the moon worship program, which is what I call that, just moon worship. Um, the Remnant House, of course, stays back here with the Zadok. But you see, that battle was going on with righteousness a long time before the coming of the king the first time. And so when he walked in, he walked into a controversy. He stepped into a controversial time. And Israel had gone full into doing their own thing. And so, again, they, they provoked Elohim by doing so. And we saw it in the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. He finally had had about enough. And it says he abhorred them. He abhorred them. He couldn't stand their sight. He couldn't stand looking at them. That's a pretty strong feeling, saints. Not one that I want him to look at me with. I want him to look at me with delight. I don't know about you, I don't, those of you out here, but I'm pretty sure you all want him to look down upon you and say, well done. 
my good and faithful servant, not abhor you. Amen. And so where's that, where's that abhorrence come from? The absence of faith. Not believing he whom you can't see, but you know is telling you the truth. Doing your own thing. Provoking him to jealousy with strange Elohims and abominations, things that you know are against his word, and you're doing it anyway. Amen. Once you know something's against his word, it's time to repent. You might need a little help. You might have developed some bad habits. You might have developed some old, some things that need to be broken. But saints, it's a serious moment, and it's not something to be taken lightly at all. And so too many people, of course, take their walk. My anointing is too valuable, right? I mean, there's nothing more important to me than walking in the anointing, walking in what he's called me to. It takes a tremendous, it's, it's a lifelong thing to lay your life down to do what you're called to do. This is not a five minute thing. So, but how many know that one bad decision, one, one um, indiscretion, right? One little, little dalliance could, could ruin the whole thing. What did the scriptures say? That the righteous man, all his righteousness would be forgotten in the day of his iniquity. Amen. So, you know, we need to refrain ourselves from all iniquity, even the appearance of evil we're supposed to abstain from. Even the appearance of evil. So as to not cause one of our brothers or sisters to stumble. And so, so he tells them, he says, you brought him to anger because of the vanities. What's vanity? Vanity is things that are a waste of time. Vanity is also that which puffs up the flesh and pluff, puffs up falseness. Right, so we see a lot of vanity. Much of what is called ministry today is nothing but vanity. I put it right under the column of vanity, and it would be all their posters and all their their. I mean, all of it, all of it. It's all braggadocious um, nonsense, and most of it is pure vanity. And and there's nothing going on there. There's empty hands being laid on empty heads, and there's no miracles. Amen. And see, when I'm not well and I cry out to Elohim, if he don't heal me, I got no business laying hands on you. I mean, if I can't get the moat out of my own eye, how am I going to get a speck out of yours? I mean, and so he has to answer me. He has to show up. And I want to tell you, I'm going to give you a little testimony this week. Hallelujah. Um, I woke, I got woke up with a pain. I mean, I was in so much pain and I got woke up with it. And it was one of those, you need to go to the hospital type of pains. You know, it's one of those things that you just think, oh no, something's not right. And no, my, that was not my reaction, saints. Instead, guess what I did? I went to my Elohim. I cried out to him, literally cried out to him. And over the next two days, he just healed it. How does he do these things? By telling you what to do. He gives you, he gives you words of wisdom, words of knowledge. He's go do this, go do this. And then you start to, you go, wow, he's your doctor. He's the one correcting your body. He's the one healing your sickness. He's the one dealing with your disease. You see that? Amen. Because he knows what's going on inside your body. He's the only one that does. The rest of them are guessing and practicing. Okay, I didn't want somebody practicing on me. I wanted to know. Amen. And when he speaks problem solved. A couple days later, three days later, I'm here. I'm here. And you know what the enemy meant for evil, Yahuwah Elohim will always turn for good. And so what does he do in this time period? He restores my faith. He sent me a word. He sent another prophetic word to me again to remind me and then say, stay steady, steady. All right. And he'll bring you out of the middle of the sea to drop you. <laughs> You don't die here. <laughs> this is not your end. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he sends word. He sends his word to heal us and do what? Deliver us from our own destruction. So if you did something to your body, let's say you ate something that's bad. Um, you did something that was wrong. He'll tell you the remedy. He'll say, go do this and that'll be the remedy. And then you learn. Don't do that again. Okay. This is how we're supposed to be saints. And I believe it's his will. Somebody say amen. amen. And in Habakkuk chapter 2 is the other place where you'll see the word faith being used. And again, this is speaking of a future time. So turn there very quickly and you'll take a look at this. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And it says, And Yahuwah answered me and said, Write the vision. Which I, by the way, tell people, if you get a prophetic word, you get something from him, you need to write it down. Don't just try to recall it by memory. Write it down. Write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. 
For the vision is yet for what? An appointed time. This is the word I got this week, an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because it sure it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Watch this. See, this is that vanity. Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just, those who have truly been justified, shall live by his faith. And we're going to talk about this. Whose faith they're living by? Mm, we're going to have fun today. I told you last week we're going to get there. Okay? And here we go. We're going to talk about what made the difference. Why he was able to get the results he gets and other people do not get the same results. Why is that? There's a reason for it, saints, and we need to discover this reason, and then we need to repent for what is causing it, right? So if you find out something's blocking a blessing, remove the block, here comes the blessing, amen? In the same way, when we're ignorant of some things, we can fall victim to those very issues, right? So he wants us to understand the truth and be set free, somebody say amen. amen. And one of the things that we have going on right now, and then... Of course, it's a tremendous blessing to see people coming back to the commandments. They were always there. It was always in the New Testament. It always did say, any who say who love him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That didn't just appear in the New Testament like all of a sudden. But it's kind of interesting how all of a sudden certain people are discovering it as if it were just inserted and they're going, wait a minute, we got to keep the commandments. <laughs> as if that were a new thing. I, I'm not really... Um, I'm not really sure about some of that because it's like, wow, you guys, are you seriously just now noticing this? And the, the answer is yes, that's blindness, saints. That is what has been going on all over the world. And so people are coming awake and they're going, wait a second. I'm starting to look at this. Now I want to keep the commandments. Now I want to understand Torah. What's going on? It's written in their heart and mind. Right. It's being written in their heart and mind. And they're, they're hungering and thirsting for righteousness now. That's what's coming up inside you. So everybody calling you weird, religious freaks, right? Oh, you getting called all kinds of names by people. It's hunger and thirst for righteousness that's coming up inside of you. And while they may make fun of you, they won't prove anything you're believing wrong. They won't be able to argue with you or debate with you because all you're trying to do is keep his word. And it's hard to debate with his word. Amen. And so uh, they may call you names, think you're a little loopy. But the reality is, is that you're following. And let me just encourage you, because that's where your faith will grow, is obeying him, walking with him, getting to know his character. The more you know his character, the less you'll have to concern yourself with faith. We're going to get there. Romans chapter 3 and verse 19. Um, and again, he, he speaks concerning the Torah. Now again, Paul is writing to the Roman church, uh, the Roman synagogues, okay, and while they, in fact, practice keeping the commandments, they also had the oral Talmudic law, which was as far as they're concerned. So if you if you speak to Hebrew people, right? So if you go to Israel today and you say Torah, they do not think you only mean the written scriptures of the first five books of the Bible. That's not what they mean. They will include the entirety of the Talmud every writing from every rabbi yeah. into what is called the law, okay? So they don't look at, it's like it's like you and I might think of just the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They see the entire law library as if it were all the same, mm -hmm. okay? So you see the difference there? When we talk about it, we're talking about Constitution, you know, the, the, the commandments, which is the Constitution of the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so we see the commandments and we see the things he spoke in the scripture, right? We don't add to that, but they do. So you gotta understand when Paul is speaking, he is not always speaking about just the strict Torah that you and I would consider just the strict Torah. He is speaking about the entirety of the way that these people think. And again, he's writing, though he's writing to the Romans and we think of this as just a bunch of Roman people, like a bunch of pagans. No, he's writing to a synagogue. He's writing to other people who keep the Torah, keep the commandments, who are there on Shabbat, which he did 84 times, mm -hmm. recorded in the book of Acts, he kept Shabbat 84 times right. after the resurrection that we can see. So, you know, anybody who thought the Sabbath day was thrown away at the cross, 
is obviously mistaken by the example of the apostles. But nevertheless, this is a belief system that we deal with today. It's vanity, right? It is, it is the same as giving sacrifices to a foreign Elohim. He abhors it. So this is what he feels when he looks down on false worship, on false activity, on activity that's meant to look religious, but does absolutely nothing for your actual relationship. It just, it just makes you believe in the religiosity, the piety of the participants of the ceremony. Haum, haum, right? But it does nothing to actually draw you closer to Elohim. Because it's fake. It's fake, phony, and false. It's made up. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 19, take a look. Did I mention that already? Everybody there but me. Okay. <laughs> now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before Elohim. What is this? This is the pre-salvation state. Everyone who is pre-salvation is under the law. Okay? Which means under judgment. That's what under the law means. Under the law means you're under judgment. It means there's pending judgment upon you. That's what it means to be under the law. Okay? It doesn't mean that you're a slave. It doesn't mean that you are... Uh, bound in some kind of bondage or no no it means that the law is coming for you because you are under it you have made a mistake you have sinned and you are guilty before Elohim right therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin so the law tells you where the sin is that's its purpose and it is holy but now the righteousness of Elohim without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. His righteousness is so far above it that he, meet, he exceeds the minimum requirements of the Torah. Even the righteousness of Elohim, which is by faith of Yahusha HaMashiach. Wait, say that again. It is by faith of Yahusha HaMashiach unto all and upon all them that unto all and upon all them that believe. So there's the qualifier, and there is no difference. For all have what? Violated the Torah. Everybody. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Elohim, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahusha HaMashiach. So who can, who can lay claim to this without his help? No one. No one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of Elohim. So only Yahusha HaMashiach stands head and shoulders above all humanity, all mankind for 6,000 straight years. No one has done what he does. He is alone. He alone is king of all the kings and all the lords. Hallelujah. To him give all the prophets witness that he is king of kings. Amen. And that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to the glory of the Father that Yahusha HaMashiach is king. Amen. And so the righteousness which is of Elohim is by faith of Yahusha. And when I say it really quick, you just think, you know, that means, yeah, yeah, I have faith in him. No, 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 I didn't say faith in. I said faith off. And you may think, well, is there a difference? There's a dramatic difference in your results. Let me tell you. A dramatic difference in the way in which you will move through your world if you are walking by the faith of Messiah versus faith in Messiah. I'm going to show you the difference here in a moment. Um, because again, all have sinned, right? So all have come short of the glory of Elohim. But before we get there, I want to stop off one more scripture in Romans, and that's in chapter 10, the Roman road. Everybody knows this, right? Romans chapter 10, verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah saith Yahuwah, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim. So then you see that, right? Faith doesn't come accidentally. It comes intentionally by the hearing of the word of Elohim. And we have a famine on right now, not of bread or of water, but of the hearing of the word of Elohim. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went out into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Right? And But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them which are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. 
But as Isaiah is very bold and saith, I have found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. People that want to disobey and debate, want to argue, want to fight about it. He's done. He's done. He's, he says, I abhor that. I'm looking for a people that I'm going to use to make these other ones that took me for granted. I'm going to use them to provoke you to anger. I'm going to bless these to provoke these. Amen. And that's what he's doing right now. And so saints understand that there is a transition occurring. This is true Israel coming into full manifestation. The, the, the stick of Yosef and the stick of Yehudah coming together as one in the hand of the king of all glory. And this is a, a pivotal time in history because, again, uh, we have so much competition going on for your attention. If you will notice that there's a massive level of clamoring going on. We couldn't have more channels if we tried. Right. And we are trying. <laughs> there's so many channels out there. People are paying attention to a million different things. Why? Because the enemy wants the sheep scattered, saints, scattered. So you can expect that Yahuwah is going to silence a lot of voices. But we're not going to increase that. We're going to end up decreasing it at some point. And the world's going to get awful quiet. Amen. And so I believe that we're walking towards major judgment. And Israel uh, has been, he reached out all the day long, it says he's reached for them. All, right. all the day long, continuing to spit on the name of Mashiach, continuing to desecrate the holy things, continuing to make their commandments of equal or higher importance than his. All oh, these are abhorrent. These are abhorrent behavior, just absolutely abhorrent, uh, and it's considered normal. Amen. And so now we're going to get into the difference because, again, you remember that Paul and Peter and James and John and the first century apostles. They knew all about this Judaism that these people were practiced. They knew all about this Talmudic um, uh, uh, rabbinical Judaism. They knew all about it. And they had to walk away from that. So those that are coming out of one ditch and going into another ditch, you're going to end up in the same ditch that the apostles came out of. Amen? Because it was rebuked. Those traditions and things that were not of Elohim. That were not, you can't find them in the Torah. You can't find them in the commandments, but man, you get taught them like they're law, um, like they yeah, like true. doing them wrong, man. There's some wrong with you. I mean, they have the weight of law on them, and you're like, wait a second, it's not even in the Torah. And there's lots of examples you can find them for yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go through that and get picked on for one or the other. It doesn't matter. There are all kinds of things that they um, have prescribed as the equal to or of the height of law that are not. And this yeah. is one of the things that Messiah is saying. He said, because of your traditions, you make the law of Elohim of none effect. In other words, once you make everybody, everything the same, this which is supposed to be above everything else is now diluted. Yeah. Amen? But when the Torah is up here by itself with no other writings compared to it, now it has its proper place in your life. And this is what you're seeing, the true Israel. The true Israel, that's what they're doing. So if you're a part of the true Israel out there, Maybe you're in one of these houses that are coming up now. Maybe you're part of Remnant House. Maybe you're part of one of these other ministries that, that Yahuwah is building up. And you're part of this house. Guess what? You're going to be confronted with that. Either you're going to be true or you're going to be false. And true Israel is coming into the fullness of this word. Amen. In Galatians chapter 2, we're going to get this today. I believe you're going to see the difference between the fake religious Israel, religious fake, right? The counterfeit, the false, the synagogue of Satan versus the authentic. The one that was so foolish, it would provoke this one to jealousy. Mm -hmm. Such so badly that these over here will eventually end up on their knees in front of this group. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet because you have loved me. <laughs> you see, love is the key there. All right. It's all about love. Saints, it's not about faith. All right. Let me just give you the secret. Right now, because when I call out to Elohim, I don't use the word faith. Mom will tell you not the word faith don't even come out of my mouth. And results are everything. Wisdom is justified in her children. Amen. 
in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Notice that he's talking about Talmudic law. Who We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing, and he's saying, now I'm, I chastise him because of this fact. And he lets out this anointed word. I want you to watch this. Because his mind in the natural is on one issue. But the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, is dealing with all kinds of things as this is written. Watch this. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the Torah, but by the faith of Yahusha HaMashiach. Now, some translations will say in, I want to get there, even we have believed in Yahusha HaMashiach that we may be justified by the faith of Mashiach. Notice that the word in and of is in the same verse. So they knew how to translate it. They did try to tamper with this, but saints, you're still going to get it. And now by the works of the law, nor by the works, nor by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, or for, for by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Mashiach, we ourselves are found sinners, is therefore Mashiach the minister of sin? Elohim forbid. For if we build again the things which is I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor, for I threw the law and dead to the law, that I may live unto Elohim. So you're no longer under the conviction of the Torah, you now are above it. You learn to walk in it. I am crucified with Mashiach, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Mashiach liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, watch this now, by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, when most people pray, they pray with their belief hoping that their belief is enough, you know, meets the grave, gets there, gets them over the line, right? And it's utter, complete failure all across, right? But as soon as you have the faith of Messiah, oh, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> that, that's a whole different thing. Wait, 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 what, what? Yeah, you have the faith of an anointed. You have the faith of the anointed, but you're an anointed in his name, right? So you're anointed in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach to go about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil for Yahu is with you. Now, when you see that and understand that, you know, know that it's not your faith in operation because your faith couldn't save you. I know that's deep, but I'm going to prove it to you. Faith is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's Galatians chapter five. Very simple. Did you have the Holy Spirit before you got saved? The answer is no, not possible. You weren't a clean vessel yet. That's not possible. So then whose faith saved you? Only the only clean vessel that could have saved you. The faith of the one who laid his own life down in faith, knowing that he would be resurrected. In faith, knowing that it was for you. In faith, knowing that you would be coming when you did to receive it. And he did it in advance of you needing it. That, my friends, is faith. Amen? Whose faith saved you? His faith saved you. Now, why does that matter? Because, saints, vanity is to think you got, you're puffing your, the soul that is lifted up is not upright in him. Right? So the soul that puffs itself up thinking, my faith, my faith, my faith is great. Right? That soul will accomplish nothing. They'll try, but as soon as they get into a challenge, it will all collapse. Because it's built on puffery. It's built on bravado and ego and nonsense. You see a lot of it in what's called churches today when they're just boasting. Yeah. It's just braggadocious boasting. Mm -hmm. Powerless boasting even. And it sounds utterly ridiculous to the people who are awake yeah. and walking in the anointing. Yeah. Because they know that half of that is a lie. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called prophet lying. Okay, and we all know it because we know that they're not, they're, they're just pretending they're better than they are. They're trying to call those things that be not as though they were, but they don't say it like that. They say it like a different way, very braggadociously, right? Without humility. A soul that is lifted up is not upright in him. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. 
his faith. Hallelujah. And so when I cry out, I don't cry out on my own faith. Peter's faith to be puny compared to Messiah. Amen. Amen. And so I cry out with his faith under that anointing, in that understanding. And I get very different results. So somebody, you know, you all can evaluate for yourselves, right? Uh, because again, that's how we know wisdom is justified in her children. In, in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 21, he says something similar. Is the law then against the promises of Elohim? Elohim forbids. So the Torah works with the spirit, with the Ruach. For if there had not been a, if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have come been given by the law. It didn't. It simply defined the, the wage of sin. It defined the remedy which would have to come, that something would have to die to um, remedy or remit the sin. All the law, what the law did was show us the pathway, but it was he who had to come. But the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise of faith of, by faith of, Yahushua HaMashiach might be given to them that believe. And I believe that's correct. It needs to be the faith of Messiah, not your faith in him, because your faith will fail, his won't. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Shut up unto the faith which should be revealed? Wait a minute. Didn't they already have this? Didn't they already have the word? Didn't they already have the Torah? What's going to be revealed? His faith is going to be revealed. Amen. His heart, his manner, his way of doing things. Israel had never seen it before. He'd never seen anybody keep Torah like him. They'd never seen anybody walk that way. They never saw anybody walk on water, heal the sick, cast out devils and lay yeah. and, and raise the dead. They never saw that before. Yeah. So the way he walked in Torah was way different than the way they walked in Torah. The, the ministry that he walked in was way different than even the prophets of old. Nobody had the miracles Messiah had. And he says, greater works will you do because I go to the Father and my faith's going to be in you while I'm up there. Think about that. As I was in the earth, so shall you be. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. And so, saints, uh, before faith came, we were, we were under Torah. We were under a conviction. We were under restriction. We were under that sense of, of pending doom because we had no escape. All but the way of escape has appeared. And his name is Yahushua HaMashiach, King of all glory, who came, died, rose again, now seated at the right hand of power. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we're thankful, but nevertheless, we have to be a wise, wise about this because, again, we know that it's very easy to fall victim to fear. Even the most anointed can fall victim to fear. Okay? Look at Peter and look at Judas. Both anxiety-ridden. They had different reactions, but they still had to deal with anxieties. All right? Don't think it wasn't a serious moment. You know, we look at Judas and we get upset. And we're like, you traitor. But you know something? It was tremendous pressure. And this was a tough moment. And they wanted this upstart gone and Judas was the way Judas took advantage of that opportunity and so he was opportunistic and he got caught and believe me he wanted to give that 30 piece of silver back but it was too late amen and that's a sad reality in James chapter 1 we are told something about faith that I believe is absolutely critical to our success absolutely critical to us walking things out in the truth. Amen. Let's just take a quick look. James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. For in Yahushua, okay, so wanting nothing, right? So he wants us to be in a place called wanting nothing. That our faith would bring us there, right? The faith that's operating in us. Where do we get it? From Mashiach. Whose faith is it? It's his. Operating in us. What's it going to do? It's going to bring us to a place where we want for nothing. Right. Think that through for just a minute. You literally have reached a place where you want nothing. Years ago, he showed me this. That you want to reach this place called wanting nothing. And that happens through patience. And so we have to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And that means tried, tested, or tempted in all manners. And count it all joy because you know that the trying of your faith is going to bring forth a patience that's going to bring forth a good work. And as a result, you're going to be a testimony of the glory of Elohim. Give Yahuwah praise. Amen. 
for his yes. healing. Give Yahuwah praise for his deliverance. Give Yahuwah praise amen. for salvation. Amen. Somebody say amen. And in Galatians chapter 5, I'm coming in for a landing here, saints. Uh, for in Yahusha, he says in verse 6. So turn with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. For in Yahusha HaMashiach, HaMashiach neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So faith that works by love is what he wants us to operate in. Amen. Faith which worketh by love. So it's not about, hear this now, because people will put on tzitzi, right? Or they'll put on different clothing or whatever, and they think this is what's making them holy before Yahuwah. Or they'll go about other things that they think is religious activity. And saints, he's bringing us back to the truth. Helping us understand that none of these things actually matter in terms of justifying you before Elohim. Okay? Now they have other purposes for them. Clothing has other reasons for it. It's not about justifying you, right? But what does justify you? By faith in him. That his faith is operating in you now. He sees that. He's not seeing some other fake. He's not seeing vanity. He's not seeing other Elohim. He's not seeing abominations. He's not seeing things that he abhors. He's seeing his son in you, the hope of glory. He's seeing the son in you, the hope of glory. He doesn't see these false Elohim. He doesn't see false spirits. He doesn't see vanity. He doesn't see all this nonsense. He doesn't see religious activity. He doesn't see um, uh, uh, grandstanding. Don't or opportunism or any of this other stuff when he looks he sees his son his son's faith in you the same faith that walked on water is in you the same faith that cast out devils is in you that's what he's looking for he's looking for the faith of messiah inside of you amen and amen, amen. and that's why messiah said you will do greater works because i go to the father and so, saints, we have to walk in this power. We have got to be a people that learn how to get rid of us the, the moat out of our eye because the world's going to need moatless physicians for all the specs. Just saying. And so we need to be without moat. Some of you out here going, oh, that was good. I needed that. Amen. I'm telling you right now, saints, what's in my heart, what I keep feeling is that we have to simply release ourselves into him completely, not even care about our egos, about our own ideas and our own plans and our own visions and our own hopes for the future. Just let it all go and just fully embrace your king. Fully embrace whatever his will is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, whatever you want to do. Because your plans are higher than mine, your thoughts are higher than mine, the way you think, the way you schedule things, I couldn't possibly put my mind around. Now you're coming into love. See, love doesn't need to know the details. Let me tell you about the way relationships should work. I believe the way it's supposed to work. I don't need to know the details. I know love. I don't need to understand everything about the plan because I know love. I don't need to understand everything going on in my body if I'm crying out to him because I know love. I don't need to understand every peril going in front of me because I know love. I don't even need to know all my enemies because I know love. And perfect love throws out all fear. Just throws it out. Bye-bye. And even though I may be ignorant of details, which I am, and I'm ignorant of the plots of the enemy. I don't have to know. And I'm ignorant of all these, these wicked things. These things are so wicked, we're not even supposed to talk about them, right? I'm glad I'm ignorant of that. Why? Because there's one who watches me who knows all of it. And I know him. Somebody, come on, somebody, right. help me preach this thing. Amen. Amen. And because of that love, I don't have to know about all that. He'll just move me. And then when it's time, he'll move me again. And then he'll move me again. He has been doing it my whole life. So why wouldn't he continue, right? And this is why I encourage you. My testimony should encourage you. You should be saying, he is no respecter of persons. If he'll do that with Peter, he'll do that with me. When I cry out, I cry out his name. Because he said, you call upon my name? <laughs> Anyone who calls upon his name is saved. His name is holy. His name is holy. Call upon his name. Stand by for response. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you that you continue to respond, that faith does indeed work by love. You prove it all the time. You cast out devils in my life. You remove leaven. You help me through difficult situations. But you, one thing you will never do is leave or forsake. And I thank you deeply for that. I'm grateful for all my brothers and sisters who have Mashiach's heart, the faithful heart, the heart of a servant, the heart of a son. I thank you that we all are being transformed into the image of our dear king, the image of the dear son, that we may, as he is, be in the world. And so, Father, I thank you that you transform us by the renewing of our mind. I thank you that you remove from us every fear, doubt, and unbelief. And as we come toward Passover, let there be no leaven in our houses. Let there be no leaven around us. And let us be clean before you. In Messiah's holy name. And the people said. Amen. Amen and amen. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week I want to talk about authority and responsibility. Because I believe there's a lot of people that are chasing after authority. Who are not very responsible. And there's no way to have one without the other. So we're going to talk about that next week. I believe it will bless you. I believe that it is going to encourage you in your walk so that you can uh, no longer fail where you're failing and instead begin to overcome. And you can not only learn these lessons for yourself, but pass them on to your children. That goes for everything that we go over. We want to pass these things to our children that they may also know and overcome the wicked one in the earth. Amen and amen. This time shot by again. But I'm very grateful for every one of you that took the time to sit with us. Thank you so much, all of you. And for those of you that are bringing um, your support to this house, that this is your house and you are standing with us, uh, we speak a special blessing upon you. We speak special blessings each day over your households. Uh, we pray uh, specifically over all of Remnant House every single night of the week. And we take that very seriously as a family. Uh, and we believe that he continues to bless this house as a result. And so thank you for those of you that are praying for us. And thank you to those who are standing in faith and bringing your tithe and your offerings to Yahu Elohim. And the link is in the description. So those of you that are doing that, you're welcome to. And again, we, we bow low before our brothers and sisters. We have higher respect for you. Uh, we know that we are given a sovereign job, uh, a holy job. And um, we take that very seriously. And so just understand that it is a, uh, it's a serious responsibility and we take it as such. So I don't like to get between you and Elohim. Uh, that's why we simply give you the link and get out of the way. I hardly ever even mention this uh, because I don't like to touch it in any way. Uh, and so thank you again. We, we humble ourselves before all of our brothers and sisters to say thank you for honoring him, uh, for being a blessing in this hour, and for standing together in faith that we may finish well before him. And on that note, I've got to let you go. <laughs> we've got other things we've got to go attack today. I want you to enjoy your Shabbat and rest. Amen. And let his blessing be upon each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all of you who are out here on the chat. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings.